Hi, welcome to this week's lesson. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at magnetism, so following on from what we did last week in terms of uh, electric fields. So we're going to be looking at magnetic fields this week. So last week we looked at electric fields, we had parallel plates, um, you had an electric field between the parallel plates, and as a charged particle would move between those plates, then that charged particle would be deflected by the electric field. Now, we can look at doing something very similar with a magnetic field. Um, so let's just quickly define what we mean by a magnetic field. So last week we defined an electric field as a region of space where um, a charge experiences a force. A magnetic fields are a little bit less obvious, they're a bit more counterintuitive. So a magnetic field is where a moving charge experiences a force. So it's important to know if the charge isn't moving, then there is no force. Um, so that's one key difference. And the way in which the force is experienced is slightly different compared to what we looked at with electric fields. Um, it's important to note that direction is going to be really important. In particular, the slide on the screen just now says that the charge will only experience a force if it enters a field perpendicular to the field lines. So let's have a look at some uh, magnetic field lines to start with. Okay. Uh, da, 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 I don't like presenter view, so let's get rid of that. Okay. So here's some magnetic field lines. So first of all, I'm going to have to def define what you're looking at. So it may be easier if I do this to start with. So let's make it a bit bigger. I've gone and robbed Molly's archery kit and I've stolen one of our archery arrows, uh, which seems really completely random just now. But we have to have a convention for what happens when magnetic field lines are pointing into or out of the paper. And we're going to use this arrow as an example. So this arrow is showing the direction of our magnetic field line. So two ways we can do it. I can show you the tail of the arrow and you can see that kind of cross shape that uh, the fins on the arrow make, or I can have the arrow coming towards you and you can see the tip of the arrow. Now let's get rid of my ugly mug again. And that's exactly what you have here on the page. So when you've got the crosses, we have the tail of the arrow. So this is the arrow moving away from you. So in the case on the left hand side, the arrow's heading into the paper, that's our direction for the magnetic field line. On the right hand side, the arrows coming out of the paper or out of the screen just now. Um, and that's the tip of the arrow coming towards you. Now, if it's going left, right, up, down, it's a bit more obvious. You can see the shape of the arrow, but this is a convention that we always work with when we look at magnetic fields and other types of fields as well, but it's really relevant for magnetic fields. Okay. Magnetic fields are a little bit weird in that we need to be able to look at how the field deflects a charge. And to do that, we're going to use hand rules. And we'll, we'll, we're going to have to use two of them. We're going to have one for your left hand, one for your right hand, depending on the charge. And if I maybe move myself out of the way just now, we can see how we do it. So let's look at the right hand rule first. And the right hand rule relates to if you've got a negative charge entering a magnetic field. So it's fairly straightforward. You've got to hold your hand so that your three fingers are pointing in opposite directions. Now, at this point, you might think this is an April Fool, but I promise you, you will see each other doing this in the example um, if there's a question on magnetism, which there really must be. So the problem is the field, the force, and the motion of the charge are all at right angles to each other. So it's a three-dimensional problem now. So the first thing you do is you get your finger and you point it in the same direction as the magnetic field. So it's the same direction as your arrow on your field. You then get your second finger here, your middle finger, and that goes in the direction the charge is moving. It says current on the screen, but of course a moving charge is a current. Mm -hmm. So if you've got an electron entering a magnetic field, what direction is the electron traveling? So if I've got a magnetic field going this way, the electron traveling towards me, and your thumb is your thrust, so it's the direction of the force on the 
charged particle. So in this case, if the electric field's going in this direction, uh, sorry, the magnetic field's going in this direction, the electron's moving towards me, it would experience a force up the way. I promise it's not a joke. It is what we do. These are our physics gang signs. So in particular, use your right-hand charge for um, electric fields and you use your left hand for positive uh, charges. So the easiest way to, to remember this is there's a bit of a, a, new, uh, a new, how do you pronounce it, mnemonic? Um, and it's lip ring. So lip, left is positive. Ring, right is negative. Now, if we were in class just now and we were having regular teaching, and we will be doing in August, of course, at some point, uh, one of the things we're going to have to do just to get in the habit of this is when you come into the class, we're going to go, how are you feeling today? And you're either going to say, oh, left is positive. I'm feeling pretty good today, Mr. Thornton. Or right is negative. Oh, I'm not feeling so good. Had a late night last night. Bad night on the Xbox. Lost every game I played. That kind of thing. So as long as you get the right hand, you get your fingers all at right angles, you can see which direction your charge will be deflected in. And that's basically all there is to it so let's have a, a quick check at two diagrams <clears throat> um, my camera is hiding a little bit of text but it doesn't really matter too much for this one because uh, it's been stolen from the advanced tire course <clears throat> so let's have a look at the one on the left hand side first of all well from my perspective looking at it the magnetic field is pointing into the screen so i'm going to take my first finger and i'm going to point it into the screen um then I'm going to look, oh, wrong hand, it's an electron, isn't it? I've got to use my right hand. So my first finger is pointing into the screen, and here we go, a bit of gymnastics. I now have to rotate so that my electron current, the direction of this, my uh, middle finger is pointing the same direction the electron is going, and I can see that there is a downwards force on the electron. That's okay. <clears throat> We can also see, actually, looking at this diagram, that because the direction of the electron changes, so does the direction of the force. So if I come down to a point round about here, looking at my mouse cursor on the screen, I can see that the magnetic field is always into the page. Now the direction of my electron is downwards. And because the direction of my electrons changed, my thumb's now pointing this way, so that's the direction of the force. And as you follow the circular path of the electron, because the electron's direction is constantly changing, the direction of the force on it is constantly changing. So there is a tendency of charged particles in magnetic fields to follow circular paths because of that. Um, so we're happy that diagram's correct. Let's check the one on the, the right-hand side. Well, <clears throat> what do we have? Positive Q, so I can use my left hand this time. So left is positive, right is negative. Um, I can see that the magnetic field, first of all, is, well, it's a three-dimensional picture, isn't it? So I'm going to go that way. And actually, my second finger, I've just happened to get straight away, is automatically correct for the direction of the charge. And I'm getting a force upwards, and we can see that the the charged particle is being deflected upwards on its path. So actually both pictures are correct. Both diagrams are correct. I'd have a, you get plenty of chance to practice this in your uh, practice problems. There's quite a few this week, so it's going to be quite a, a short video. Make sure you have a go, make sure you're comfortable with this. Um, and just before we go, I will quickly show you uh, another simulation. Remember we looked at these simulations last week and you were able to look at electric fields. Again, I'm gonna put the link to this in the lesson so you can have a play about with it. And you can change things like the magnetic field strength. So you can drag that on. I seem to have killed it, I think. I've crashed it. You can change the magnetic field strengths, you can change the velocities, and you can change the masses of the particle and see the radius of curvature. So the size of the, the radius of the circle, whose circumference the particle is following. Um, so I definitely encourage you to have a play with that. Do your practice problems. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, any questions? Just give me a shout. Good luck, guys.